Rebel Moon is finally here, Zack Snyder's version of Star Wars. This has been something I've been hearing about for a while now that a lot of people, including myself, have been excited for. Apparently, Zack Snyder pitched this movie to Lucasfilm as another Star Wars film and they rejected it. And I think he should have taken the hint that if Lucasfilm is rejecting your pitch ideas, then it's probably not that good of an idea. And look guys, as much as I want to love this movie and as much as I want this to be the next big sci-fi epic story, it's not. I was a little busy with Percy Jackson coming out and Christmas, so I wasn't able to watch Rebel Moon as early as I would have wanted to, but a couple reviews came across my feed and man, I could not believe how many negative reviews this thing was getting until I watched it. And uh, I think majority of them are very valid criticisms. <laughs> Look, Rebel Moon could have been that next big sci-fi epic film we all thought it could be, but ultimately it falls short. It's boring, it's way too slow, it doesn't really serve a very good narrative. Characters don't get enough development for you to really care about them. And ultimately it's just a giant waste of time. Save yourself two hours and 15 minutes. Go do something else. Go read a book. Go touch some grass. Go soak up some vitamin D. But I wouldn't recommend spending two hours and 15 minutes on this film. I really wouldn't. But before we go into what happens in Rebel Moon, hi, my name is Jackson. If you haven't seen the film yet or care about spoilers, go ahead and click away, then come back. But for those of you who just don't care or have seen the film already, let's go dive into this thing. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Sorry, wrong space franchise. There is a little farming moon that's just minding its own business when all of a sudden an Imperial starship enters the atmosphere. Sound familiar? The Imperials are led by Admiral Noble, who pays a visit to a local village and demands that the village supplies them with food while they hunt for rebels. He kills the chieftain and gives the village a 10-week deadline to supply him with food. After the Imperials leave, a villager named Korra, a former Imperial soldier, sets out to recruit rebels to help defend the village from an Imperial attack. She is aided by Gunner, who is also from the village, who knows of someone who can contact the rebels. Along the way, they recruit Han Solo, the smuggler, I mean Kai, the smuggler, Tarak, I think that's how you say it, a beast tamer, Nemesis, a swordswoman, who's definitely not carrying around lightsabers, that's, that's definitely not what these are supposed to be, and Titus, a former Imperial general. Together, the group will seek out the rebels to recruit them to the cause, all while trying to stop Noble from overtaking the village. That's the broad summary. I'm not gonna go too much into this plot because to be honest, there's not much plot in this film. There's not much character development, which are kind of essential things you need to kickstart a universe. Anyway, I think a lot of people, including myself, held Rebel Moon to the unfair high standard that Star Wars has set. Hearing that this was supposed to be a Star Wars pitch instantly set the bar higher than probably what it should have been for this film. So I just want to put that out there. The comparisons are really unfair to Star Wars. But at the same time, Zack Snyder so clearly tries to replicate Star Wars that it's kind of hard not to compare it to Star Star Wars. If we're going to compare Rebel Moon to Star Wars, it's definitely not comparable to A New Hope. It needed to be a New Hope type movie, but in reality it ended up being a Phantom Menace. A Phantom Menace movie without the Darth Maul scene at the end and without the context we've had from the original trilogy. Which if you think about it like that, The Phantom Menace doesn't have a whole lot going for it if you remove those things from it. This film is so boring, it's so slow, so unnecessarily long. Scenes and dialogue last so unnecessarily long. I don't know how a film that lasts so long does so little with that runtime. I mean, it's two hours and 15 minutes and I really feel like not much happened in the movie. And I think the reason it feels so slow is because, in typical Snyder fashion, there is so much slow-mo. I can't remember if there was this much in Snyder Cut of Justice League, but this feels like an excessive amount, even for Zack Snyder. Everything, and I mean everything in this movie, is in slow motion. Flashbacks, slow motion, characters looking at each other, slow motion. Even farming 
is in slow motion. Why do we need slow motion shots of farmers planting seeds? It makes no sense. And when it comes to the action as well, there's an overabundance of slow motion. Obviously, this is a Zack Snyder movie. Majority, if not almost all of these action sequences do not need slow motion. There's not enough cool things going on within these action sequences to justify slow motion. And yet, almost every single action sequence is majority slow motion. And I think these sequences, although they are stale and boring, and I don't think the removal of slow motion would change that, it would definitely make them better. Zach, I know you love the slow motion, but you know, di dial it down a little bit. Turn it, turn it down a little bit. Look, I think the world building was poor too. I think there's potential here. I think there is something here in the universe that Snyder has created, but I don't think it was done well enough at all, enough to really make me care. And I think the main reason for that, the characters are so shallow in this movie. I mean, you don't get to know any of them. They're all super generic. They're just stereotypes. The smuggler, the swordswoman, the exiled prince, the former imperial soldier, which is done twice, the farmer who doesn't know what's going on. I mean, it's just stuff we've seen over and over again. And let's be honest, that we've seen over and over again and have seen done better. And so none of the characters stand out. And so you're not really getting invested in anything. And because you're not getting invested in the characters, you, so you start really not caring about the world they're in or any of the stakes involved, which I'm going to be honest, I don't really even know what the stakes were in this movie. A lot of these characters feel like just an excuse to do certain scenes that Snyder wanted within the movie. Like, the lightsaber swordswoman was just there so he could have lightsabers. The muscular prince dude was only there so he could have that beast taming scene. The fallen imperial general was just there so he could show some version of space Rome and the space coliseum. Really, a lot of these characters don't serve a purpose outside of those one to two scenes, and we don't really get to know them at all all. A lot of people have praised the visual aspects of this movie, and I will give some credit there. There are some pretty cool visuals within this movie, but in my opinion, it falls really flat. The world that is shown here is very bland, is not very colorful, and doesn't feel very lifelike, and it reflects the character's attitudes. Stoic, brooding, boring, serious, there's not a sense of wonder within the world or a sense of life, really. It all just seems very generic and bland and not very exciting. I think even just a little bit of color in the world would have made it a little bit better. But I understand that's not Zack Snyder's style. And you know what? That's okay. Rebel Moon was really disappointing. I was really looking forward to to seeing what Zack Snyder's version of Star Wars would be. And now that I've seen it, I wish I hadn't. It's boring, it's bland, the characters are really flat and shallow and have no development throughout the movie. The action sequences are just as bland and boring. The story is really weak and there's nothing truly to get invested to within this world. And look, there's a supposedly a director's cut coming out and then we also have part two coming out in April. So maybe it gets better. Maybe his director's cut is extremely good and what we all thought that Rebel Moon was supposed to be. And maybe part two is just just incredible, is everything that we wanted from a Zack Snyder sci-fi movie. But I have a feeling that that's not going to be the case. Anyway, that's what I thought about Rebel Moon part one, A Child of Fire. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought. And if you made it this far, comment below. I don't know lightsaber. As always, thank you all so much for sticking around watching this video. I really appreciate it. As always, I love you guys, and until next time, peace out, bro skillets.